Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. It's another wonderful battle report between myself, Peter, Universal Head, and Will. Hello. And today we're playing Wrath of Kings. <laughs> Look at that. It's two battle-sized armies. Will is playing the Technes, I am playing the Nassier, and as you can see, we have a full-on terrain extravaganza here. We've got some wonderful Lava terrain from TH Miniatures. There's a Gaines Workshop wood over there. We've got a couple of Gaines Workshop mystic doorway things just to make things look nice. We're not going to use them in the game or anything, but they look good. And of course, we've got my homemade terrain, of which uh, you can find on the Esoteric Order of Gamers a video explaining how all this is made and make one yourself if you feel like it. These are the armies. This one's painted by me, the Nassier. And you can see it's incredibly daunting. And then over there is the army painted by Will, which is the Technes army, and they look fantastic as well. So it's going to be a spectacular battle, and I hope you'll enjoy it. So we're all set up, we're deployed, we're about to roll the first initiative roll and get killing each other. Because <laughs> that's what it's all about in Wrath of Kings. Yep. So let's roll off initiative, here we go. Oh, <laughs> it's a tie. Let's try that again. Oh, I get, no, I win because I got a plus one because I have lower morale. So uh, I win initiative. Right, let's rock. What do we move? There's so much to choose from. Okay. And they're starting to move forward. The Ashman Swordsman, led by an Ashman Hakar, is coming in there on a command act activation. Over here we have the Fell Hammers, led by an, an, masked, an unmasked. Oh, that's hard to say. Will has brought forward some. Um, what are they called? Linemen. Linemen. Yeah. Led by a defender lineman controller. And I particularly like the uh, pigmen over here who are charging down the hill, being whipped into a frenzy. Yes, now I should make an observation about the pigmen because I have seen other people's paint jobs of pigmen where they've done a much better job with sort of a greeny, browny flesh tone and all the rest of it. But I thought, much as Peter was saying earlier, it was the pigmen figure that made him decide to buy this game. And when I saw the pigmen, I thought, there's really only one colour you can paint pigmen. I know it's lurid, but. I just had to go for it. Well, they look so angry. Yeah, they are quite pissed off. Yeah. Because all their brothers and sisters have been sent to the slaughterhouse. Yeah. And now okay. they're coming for you. <laughs> oh, pork eater. No. So that's the end of the first turn, and it was a very conservative first turn. Everyone just moved up a little bit. Uh, no sprint moves or anything like that. As you can see, everybody's playing their cards quite close to the chest at, right at the start. Look at those armies faced up against each other. It's a beautiful sight. Well, there's an interesting standoff happening over this side of the board, over on this flank. You can see I have uh, the Fellhammers here and the Ashman Swordsmen, both coming up to uh, the linemen who are looking a little bit exposed. Um, I've got a Longhorn coming through the forest here. And uh, we're both wary of uh, charging in for that first combat, especially since Will has an objective which uh, is very, it's very good for him if I'm over his side of the board because, because he has to capture prisoners and take them back to his side of the board. Whereas my objective is basically just to kill his marked leaders and specialists. Take off the head. Sever the head. Sever the head. Will saying, oh no, don't film the cowardly action of my Zalak, which just went scuttling back there, the threat of the Great Horn bearing down on it. So at this point we have to ask, yes, given that the Great Horn is bearing down on it, in what kind of tactical world does Peter inhabit when retreating in the face of an overwhelming enemy is cowardice and not tactics? I, I prefer to call it cowardice. So, well, what's going on? Well, you're Peter. advancing and I'm just sort of trying to maintain a defensive line around this vast pool of lava. What's inside the sarcophagus, everybody was it's empty. It's empty. It's been plundered. Yeah. It's outrageous. Um, yeah, this is a problem because, you know, I don't want combat to happen too far over your side because that means every time you kill someone, you'll then just scuttle back a couple of inches and get serious morale points for doing so. Yes, this is the plan. So um, I'm a bit worried we're both going to be standing there looking at each other for a while. Well, seeing you have to come and get my leaders, you're basically just going to have to commit. Someone had the guts, and it was me! Yes! <laughs> of course. And Longhorn, who was going through the forest, just charged out of the forest and sprinted and hit Boris. So, the two of them are going to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Oh look, 
Well, those linemen have run away again. Look at them retreating away from my forces. Cowards that they are. Anyone with any sense of battlefield maneuvering will recognise this as the classic funnel technique. Yes. <laughs> Pure, unmitigated cowardice. <laughs> Still, I brought Arcane Thesh up there. He's in a bold move. He's flown on top of the steps of the lava pit and he's just going... Nim, 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 nim. <laughs> to the lot of you. Right. Okay, it's my turn. I am going to... Attack you here. Oh. We were just saying that when you get down to this level, it does look quite spectacular, seeing it from the swordsman's eye view. From either side of the battlefield, just really, really bad place to be. You don't want to be in any of these units. Uh, by the way, I've just swapped the side of the table to show you this side, in case you're getting confused. This is from Will's perspective. As you can see, look, I can't thesh through there. Just going, oh, I challenge thee. <laughs> and of course you've got the blood child over there on the top of the hill. So when you look at things from Peter's perspective, he's doing everything interesting in this battle. Well, what's been happening, I hear you ask? Well, there's been a lot of angst and anger going on <laughs> because we've been a little bit frustrated with the motivations, but after having a little bit of a closer look at capture prisoners, we realized it is actually quite specific. So. I've been frustrated that Will has just been retreating back into there where if he kills one of my units back in his deployment zone he gets morale points but he has to do several things. He has to kill the unit in melee and then he has to survive until the end of the turn to get the points. So I have to be unopposed, I, mean, uh, I have to be unengaged, unengaged and in one of my deployment zones. Correct, so it's not quite as easy as we first thought. So. That's given me new confidence to just go barging forward, really, and just pushing him back. So here are my guys coming forward. He's just retreated a bit, and over here, I've definitely been pushing forward, and he's been retreating. So you can see the fell hammers and the ash men are coming through there. Ark and Thesh still up there, and the great horn is getting a bit closer as well. So we're all getting pushed back onto Will's side, but we'll see what happens. So the blood child just went forward a little bit and cast uh, the elemental blast into the ranks of the linemen. Taking the first casualty of the game. Only killed one guy though. It did bounce to a couple of other people but didn't do much. And then Arkham Thesh here has... <laughs> very bold. Bold as brass. Gone on to the middle here and is taunting people over there. And it looks like, Will, what are you going to do? I'm responding to the taunting. The Zarlacc is going to go swarming and attack. Yes, and because the Zarlacc ignores rough terrain, he can really just sort of swarm over the lip of that thing. Get in there and And go they're going to be fighting. Come on. And I'm probably going to lose because you're massively stronger than me. But who cares? Dear me, the Zarlacc has come swarming up through the rough terrain and Swarm has come in with its double sword strikes and gone chomp, chomp and rolled two nines. Which got through his armor of two, so that's one hit on my commander, which is not good. He's got three hits. So he's still got two life points left, but it's a good start for the Zarlacc, who's probably going to be fodder. Oh, judging he's so going to be fodder next turn. I'm just, just going to slice him up into sushi, into squid sushi. <laughs> Otherwise known as Calamari. Yeah, well. <laughs> Here it is, the Clash of Titans, Cage versus Great Horn. It actually sounds like a World West Wrestling Federation <laughs> match, doesn't it? Yes. On the left, we've got Cage. He's skinny and tall, and he's got things sticking out of him, and he's got a huge freaking pole axe. <laughs> and on the right, we have Great Horn, who has great horns. And a big cut-off sword, and a similarly large pole axe. Alright, so what's going to happen? You're going to attack? I'm going to attack with three dice and a critical blow. Okay. Versus a great horn, you basically need seven to ten unless you're doing any other yeah, funny modifiers. I've got critical blow which uh, replaces one strike with a skull. Oh, a skull is a double hit, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, so if you get a nine or a ten, you do a double hit. Yeah. Ah. Alright. It's two sevens and a two. Two sevens and a two. A sevens are a hit, so that's two hits. And a backlash, but you're not doing a magic attack. So that's two hits, so you just did one wound. Well, that's good. That's a start. Yeah. I am so going to kick your ass next turn. <laughs>
Well, the Defender Line men came forward and uh, hacked into the blood child, child and did a wound. And uh, the response was the Ashmen swordsmen coming up and wiping out three of the linemen. Um, of course, there are some pig men there up the hill who don't look too happy about the whole situation, so <laughs> they could be joining in pretty soon. Flashing their swords on their shields as we speak. All right. And maybe we should do that right now. Uh-huh. Whee! 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 Here comes the pork. <laughs> but hang on. They can only move five. Ooh. Are they going to be able to make it? Oh, it's not looking good. Yeah. You take measures. One of them can get there, maybe. One can get there. Yeah, maybe. That means you can probably get some assists maybe on I there can as get, well. So I might be able to get two onto one of your figures. You know, gaming's a funny kind of thing sometimes. <laughs> we'll just comment it. Um, you know you're a bit of a geek when you're playing a tabletop miniatures game with fully painted miniatures with studio quality lighting <laughs> and you start singing a Gabriel era Genesis song from The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, changing the lyrics to focus on pork. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty much all over from there. Do you kind of reckon that your interests are perhaps a little... Unusual. <laughs> so the Defender Line Man controller has seen his line get butchered by these lunatic samurai with swords and he's come charging in in a rage with his big hammer. It's hammer time, literally. He's going... Bah, 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 and the result is a knockback. Here's Boris. <laughs> Into the forest. It's got a range of two, so he's just going to lurk in That's sort of Boris in, in the forest, isn't it? Yeah, Boris in the forest. He's going to lurk in there, and at a range of two, just suddenly a vast whirling blade comes out and attacks the leader in the back. And here it comes, uh, and it is double strike, and it's unstoppable. So replace two non strike, non skulls with strikes. Oh, it's a 10. 10. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, the one isn't going to do anything, but no. that's a double hit, isn't it? On my leader. Why is it my... a double hit? Because you've got a 10, oh, which yes. is a skull. It's a skull. So that does two. Doesn't kill them, because she has three. Or he. Uh, so it's taken a hit. It's pretty nasty. It blows out of the forest. Uh, the reason we're putting these little swollen, what look like swollen... No, they're hearts. Yeah, I know they're hearts, but... Well, yes, thank you. Live it to your imagination. <laughs> it's because... <laughs> My Tomoshkin's training ability for the entire army is um, offensive expertise, which means when I'm attacking enemies with one or more damage on them, I can re-roll up to one die. Uh -huh. So that's why we're having to keep track of who's being hit. So anybody who's got a red... Heart. <laughs> heart on it. I get to re-roll against. Curses. It's the, it seems insanely complicated, this game. Once you get into it, it becomes starts to get a little bit more bearable mm. after a few times. No, it's a good system. It just has some clunky aspects. We way. have been debating how it is that you always end up in this situation where one person has to take the hit of the other army first. In this case, Peter valiantly did that. He moved. I just had to persuade him not to move forward into a position where I could attack him with my mighty talk because he's done it with every other unit. So yeah. Enough. Hold. Unfortunately, Stay there is hand. no random charge move or anything like that or any kind of charge into combat. So there is this sort of slight two lines staring each other down at one point, which yeah, seems to have happened a couple of times. We welcome any solutions to that. And we've, we've heard people say, well, some units move further than other, and they do because this one, these go seven and these go six, but that's still not really a solution to the problem. Well, the problem is, is that it's mixed with the fact that you can measure distances at any time. So mm. there's a lot of pre-measuring going on and you know, you stop sort of six and a quarter inches away from the other unit, and that gets a bit fiddly and annoying. Maybe we should try a game of it where you can't pre measure. That's just, a bit shocking. Just lost my best unit and my commander. Having foolishly charged them out in front, I should have known better. I was acting against my own better judgment and just playing up the, basically playing the game. Uh, normally, I would have kept them back here and waited for a better opportunity, but we thought, what the hell? It's only Wrath of Kings. Well, the thing that I, that I had there is these fell hammers, and um, if they choose to unleash fury, um, they basically get a lot of powers. They can move too faster, they get a uh, critical blow, they get offensive expertise. So each one of these guys was rolling two dice and getting to re-roll one dice. And because they had critical blow, if they got a hit, it became a double hit. Yeah, and he rolled a nine and an eight. 
Yeah, and the other one rolled a nine and a ten. Didn't oh, it? it's just yeah, devastating. So very, very good rolls. And then at the end Small of the uh, at the end of Unleash Fury, they make uh, two dice will attacks, and they could do damage to them. But then I, I rolled quite well, so only one of them was killed at the end of the Unleash Fury. So really, a lot of good rolls. Very, very lucky, and also. Got to say, managed to surround the commander and your yeah, main well, figure. Well, I charged them right out in the middle. It's stupid. Yes. Should have seen that coming. Probably you were being very nice to me because I was whinging earlier about the fact that you were, <laughs> well, weren't doing anything. Maybe they had something <laughs> to do with it. But again, it's a tactic that yeah, I used on you many times. I know, I know, yes. <laughs> you should have just been um, strong I and have been steadfast and harsh and set my jaw against your whinging and just said, no. Yeah, I will well, hold this line and no one will get through it. Which was my original tactic, goddammit. That is a bit of a game changer. Another so. really irritating thing about this is that I've now got this unit that I can activate, but these guys are in the way. So if I attack them, then these blokes can come in because they haven't been activated yet. Yeah. It's really, really irritating. Yeah, well, let's see what you can do over here. Uh, that's no, not it's looking, not looking too, too good either. over there either. Oh dear, it's interesting. Funny old game, this one. Yes. Now, we were just conversing about this, that the reason I sent those guys out there was because I was reasonably confident I was going to win the initiative. I don't know why exactly, because he's got a plus one, but maybe that was just being cocky. Had I won the initiative, the mighty Tor would have done a war stomp and brutal charge and rampage through out here, and that entire unit would have been destroyed, basically. Yeah, so. so initiative is really important. The first attack of each turn is the really critical one, and he did very well. 